right, welcome students. Uh, for those of you who are out today or just need a quick review, uh, here's what we learned in class. Today our objective is, I know what causes the difference between ideal and actual mechanical advantage and I can calculate mechanical advantage and efficiency. Over here in the middle of the room, we have this odd looking machine that's going to help us to learn today's objective. Now this machine is not technically a simple machine. It's got simple machines on it. Notice up here, can you see this pulley system? Okay, we got a pulley system. And here, watch, watch my arm, my arm goes in a big circle and the cable's wrapped around a little circle. What kind of simple machine? Wheel and axle. Whenever you have a combination of different kinds of simple machines, it's what we call a compound machine. Compound, a combination of simple machines. Here's one example. Uh, here's another simple one. We've got two levers attached together, and each lever has a wedge shape on the blade, okay? So another compound machine. So how is this going to teach us the difference between ideal and actual mechanical advantage? Let me explain the difference first. Ideal mechanical advantage is the amount of mechanical advantage you would have if it was a perfect world with no friction. But we all know that in the real world there's friction that slows things down and kind of wastes force and wastes energy. On this machine here, up at the top, this, uh, this little pulley, you can see it sort of scrapes and as it scrapes it rubs and it creates friction and it slows things down. Now I could oil it and that would make it a little more efficient, but it would still waste some force. How do we find the ideal mechanical advantage, the in the perfect world mechanical advantage. Well, I've already taught you that. Every single simple machine has a separate way you figure it out. There's a little formula, like with the wheel and axle. What we would do is we would find the radius of the wheel, and then we'd find the radius of the axle, and we divide it. 30 centimeters divided by 3 centimeters. This baby should make my work 10 times easier. Let's take a look at actual mechanical advantage though. Actual mechanical advantage is what you get in the real world taking friction into account. Now there's a whole other formula for figuring out your actual mechanical advantage. The cool thing is you only have to learn one and it works for any simple machine you're using. To find the actual, real-world mechanical advantage, find the output force. That's how much force comes out of the machine. And divide it by the input force. That's how much force you put into the machine. So to give you an example, over here I've got my, my handy-dandy machine for lifting heavy stuff. Now let's say I were to have somebody who weighed 150 pounds stand on this lift the output force, or the force coming out of it, would be 150 pounds. That's what it takes to lift them. But let's say it only took me, oh, 20, 20 pounds of force to put into this thing to get those 150 out. Let's calculate the actual mechanical advantage. The actual mechanical advantage formula is output force divided by input force. So my output force 150 pounds. We're using the English system here. I know in this class we usually use Newtons, but it just makes it easier for right now. 20 pounds is what I put into it. So let's get the calculator and figure this out. 150 divided by 20. This machine actually only makes it 7.5 times easier, even though it should have made it 10 times easier. <laughs> so 
That's the difference between ideal mechanical advantage and actual mechanical advantage. You always lose some of your mechanical advantage to the force of friction.